It's Wednesday morning. Uh, don't need a calendar to know that. You can get to know that by the fact that I'm sitting here ready for today's devotion. Uh, Wednesdays are uh, a wonderful day for me to have a chance to get together uh, with God's people and to share some, uh, hopefully a daily devotional that will help you in your journey through this day and through your life. Uh, I'm blessed to be a part of the team that, that provides these for Mount Olive. And uh, today uh, we're going to be looking at Psalm 18. Uh, verses 41 through 50. Good morning there, Karen. Good to see you. Thanks for being here today and to all the others that are joining us. I won't have time to call out everybody's name, but Doreen, good to see you this morning as well. And uh, as I say to all that are joining and who join even later on uh, at various times of the day. Um, Today, as I said, we're going to be looking at Psalm 18, verses 41 through 50. I'm going to use the ESV reading. So I invite you to take some time to... uh, Get your uh, Bible out if you haven't got, gotten it there already. Uh, pastors have already covered the, the other 40 verses so far uh, from Friday through yesterday. And so we'll be closing things up today with uh, our, our devotion today. Uh, if you'd join me in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we thank you. We thank you for all of the victories that you give to us, for the blessings that you pour out into our life. We thank you, Father, because your ways are perfect. We thank you because you are the keeper of your promises. Fathers, our life has its ups and downs. May we not measure your love for us through those things, but may we go to the cross. May we estimate your love there, for you gave your son to die for us while we were yet sinners. And we know, as Paul writes, that you will give us all things because you have done such a wonderful work for us through Christ as we live our lives by faith, by the power of the Holy Spirit. May you watch over this devotion today. May you guide and guard my words. And may you help those who uh, hear them to receive them. And may all these things be done to your praise and glory alone. So the reading for today, again, uh, Psalm 18, 41 through 50. And it says, They cried for help, but there was none to save. They cried to the Lord, but he did not answer them. I beat them fine as dust before the wind. I cast them out like the mire of the streets. You delivered me from strife with the people. You made me the head of the nations. People whom I had not known served me. As soon as they heard of me, they obeyed me. Foreigners came cringing to me. Foreigners lost heart and came trembling out of their fortresses. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God of my salvation, the God who gave me vengeance and subdued peoples under me, who rescued me from my enemies. Yes, you exalted me above those who rose against me. You delivered me from the man of violence. For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations, and sing to your name. Great salvation he brings to his king and shows steadfast love to his anointed to David and his offspring forever. Rather than going back through point by point, I wanted to kind of take a look at verse 43 and a couple other verses there and kind of build my devotional off from that. And the first thing that we read at 43 is, You delivered me from strife with the people. You made me the head of the nations. People who I, am, who I had not known served me. And the question I have from there is, where do your victories come from? Where do my victories come from? You know, well, by the world standard, we, we get uh, an idea that there's all kinds of, uh, you know, work and effort that we have to put into for our victories to happen. But the ones that matter, the spiritual victories, the ones that uh, God is working through, they come from him. They come from him because of his grace and his mercy extended to us through Jesus Christ. Uh, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ going to the cross, we would have no blessings, we'd have no, no grace, no mercy, no nothing. We'd have suffering and uh, pain and loss, and that would be it. But our God loves us so much. And the one thing that we want to make sure we don't do is that we don't measure God's love by what's going on in our life. We don't want to uh, play that old game of he loves me, he loves me not, based on whether our health is good or we've got a job or our kids are doing well or things are just going the way we want them to. That's, that's not how we should ever, ever measure our God's love. Hurt and pain come into our lives for a variety of reasons, but one thing we know for sure, no matter what, 
our God still loves us. It's not based on those circumstances. Goes on, he says, as soon as they heard of me, they obeyed me. Foreigners came cringing to me. As I thought about that, I started to think about eternal life. You know, we don't really know what's in store for us for eternal life. What we do know, though, is that God has something planned for us. We don't, uh, again, we don't get a lot of description of it, but who knows? We may be set up as his people uh, to watch over other areas uh, of his creation. Again, it's all guessing by golly in a sense, but whatever it is that God has in store for us, he's going to put us over people. We're told that we're going to even judge the angels. And those are things that I'm not going to get into deeply right now, but it's the idea is that even in this life, our God is watching over us, and he is bringing us to reign and rule over people. But when we do that, we're to do it in love and grace and mercy. We're to do it with the same heart that God has for us, shown again and again and again in Jesus Christ. That's where we want to draw our strength from. Rather than seeking vengeance for ourselves, rather than you know, trying to get the outcome we desire, uh, we should be, as Jesus did in the garden, praying, not my will, but thy will be done. Of course, that's easier said than done. That old sinful nature of ours starts to rear its ugly head, or when our faith gets weak, we start to want to take matters into our own hand. And so uh, we want to be careful about that. And when we find ourselves in that state where we're trying to take over, it might be a good wake-up call for us to uh, repent of our sin, to return to the Lord, seek his forgiveness, and put ourselves again under his rule and reign in our lives. Oh, verse 45, or 6. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God of my salvation. There's a lot of songs that have been written, a lot of hymns that have been written off of those words. Uh, there was one that came out around 1981, and uh, I was looking it up on the YouTube because as I was reading that, it just brought it to mind. And of course, I'm getting old, so the title has escaped me, but uh, it was just a beautiful song. Blessed be the God of my, the rock of my salvation. And uh, that's what King David is, is saying here, right? He's proclaiming where his salvation comes from and where he gets his strength from. And as Pastor Jordan said, you know, rock, I mean, it can be um, so many different things that we can talk about, right, in, in that rock of my salvation. You know, it's our source of strength. It's our protection. Um, you know, the rock of ages cleft for me, right, provides salvation for me and safety and security. And that's who our God is. It comes from him, not from ourselves. It is his gift to you and to me. 47 and 48, the God who gave me vengeance and subdued peoples under me, who rescued me from my enemies. Yes, you exalted me above those who rose against me. You delivered me from the man of violence. When I think about that, I think about the 23rd Psalm, you know, where it talks about God preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And to sit quietly and contentedly in those circumstances with our enemy just out of out of view out there i'll bring my hand as you can see it but just you know just just over there just just right there and yet our god says sit and be at ease i've got this enjoy yourself i'll provide food for you and safety and comfort and i'll bring blessings to you just trust in me and again easier said than done but wow what a goal to have right to be comfortable and content even in the presence of our enemies so that we can be that wonderful image of how God loves us and cares for us and we can imitate Christ in that way who silently went the way of the cross who didn't lash out at the people who were trying to hurt him and harm him and to take his life he blessed them and he submitted himself to God's will and brought salvation to you and to me and so he asked us to do that same thing. And in closing out our study today, those words that he wrote in 49 and 50, For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations, and sing to your name. Great salvation he brings to his king, and show steadfast love to his anointed, to David and his offspring forever. That's you and me. We are the offspring of King David through faith, just as we are the offspring of Abraham through that same faith. Our God comes to us, and we praise him, and we worship him, singing songs, whatever's going on in our life. 
We've heard of those who have been tortured for their faith and thrown into prison. And the sounds and the songs that they lifted up that were the screams of pain and suffering. But how wonderful those songs sounded to our God as they suffered for his name, as they suffered the unjust treatment that they were enduring because they simply believed in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And that gives you and I hope, too, that when the day comes, and if we ever have to uh, suffer and endure that, may the Lord give us that same faith, the faith of the martyrs, to, to sing praises in the midst of all circumstances. May these things be so in our beloved Savior's name. And that kind of concludes my devotion for today. Uh, I pray that it will be a blessing to you. Uh, I encourage you to uh, share this if you uh, would like to, uh, so other people in your community can get a chance to hear this. And uh, again, God's peace be with you. Have a great, wonderful day in the Lord. And remember, he is the rock of our salvation, and may we sing praises to his name in all circumstances. May his spirit ever keep us in that grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.